Hi, Bella. You mentioned meaning and the lack of meaning, or I think your term was, what's the point, or your rhetorical question, I guess. Um, my only honest answer to that is, is there a point? And what I mean is, is meaning, or is a point to this, something that exists phenomenally? In other words, is it inherent in the universe? Which I'm not sure I believe it is. Or is it something that has to be brought upon things by us, by that which seeks meaning? Because it's not enough to say I, the, the universe is meaningless, or there is no meaning, or there's no point. Because the assumption is there should be a point. If you just say that there's no point to anything, without um, putting some sort of negative spin on that, then really it's just a vacuous truth. It's just, well, okay, so everything's pointless. To end. <laughs> you know, uh, I think a lot of people look at pointlessness, absurdity, meaninglessness as something they don't want, something undesirable. The example I gave before was a kid playing with his toys. From one year to the next, <clears throat> uh, he or she notices a subtle difference. Those toys mean less and less, and it, in my case it was a rather sad experience to see these toys that had meant so much to me over time become essentially meaningless bits of plastic or cloth or whatever. Um, what happened? This was one of the joys of my life. The meaning has gone out of them. But when you look at the dynamic of that situation, the bits of plastic are still just bits of plastic. Nothing about them has changed. Yet when I played with them a year ago, something significant was going on, which I assumed actually had something to do with the little toy soldiers. And now I'm trying to arrange them in little battle lines and everything, and it isn't working for me. Something is missing. It's meaningless. There's no fun in this anymore. There's no enjoyment. It's just I've got to find something else now. Um, <clears throat> nothing outside has changed. The change has been in me. So, A, I assume in hindsight that I saw meaning in something that didn't actually have any meaning when I was a kid, when I was playing with the toys and got a great deal of enjoyment out of the act of playing with these toys. And I saw meaning where there was no meaning. But I assumed that there was meaning in this. I assumed that there was a point to doing this, that the toys themselves were the point. Whereas, apparently, the toys themselves are not the point, because now when I play with them, I get nothing out of the whole action, the whole uh, exercise of doing this. So quite clearly, the meaning was either not there, or it's gone now, and it was once there. But there was a feeling of meaningfulness. There was a feeling that there was a point to lining up soldiers and replaying the Battle of Gettysburg or Waterloo or whatever. <clears throat> so, I think that we've got to be careful about this whole idea of meaning or point. I think you're phrase was, what's the point? Is there a point? Which seems to be the same thing. Is there a goal, I guess? Well, to say that we live in a meaningless universe is not the same thing as saying there is no meaning. <laughs> um, some people will say we live in a meaningless universe and there is no meaning. And then somebody says, I disagree. 
And then the first person who said that we live in a meaningless universe says, prove it. That's going to be problematic. <laughs> because we now are in the situation of a little boy and his toy soldiers. Um, and he's now got to show an adult that the satisfaction he gets out of playing with these toy soldiers is a real thing. But he cannot make an, a grown man feel this. Does this mean that there is no meaning? I'm not saying that there, whether or not there's meaning in those toy soldiers. Does this say there is no meaning? <laughs> I don't think we can say that. Meaning is something that may come from within and get projected out onto phenomenality, uh, onto the physical universe. <clears throat> it does seem that way to me. It's not something that comes from the outside into us, although we often believe that it does. You listen to a fabulous piece of music, you are inspired. You think that that song has meaning to it. But somebody else might hear it and say, what a load of garbage. Uh, if you want an example for that, just go on YouTube here and look up some spiritual music. Say, uh, look up Hindu bhajan. In other words, a uh, ecstatic, repetitive Indian prayer song. Hindu. Tell me if that has any meaning to you. Well, it may. I don't know. But I'm guessing it won't have any meaning to you. Now... Ask a Hindu who sits there cross-legged on the floor, clapping his or her hands, repeating this bhajan. That song has meaning to that person. Or perhaps it's not, that song has meaning to that person. But that person uses that song as a means to meaning, a rung on the ladder to meaning. You can say that you don't agree with that person, but you can't really say that nothing is happening. A person is having an experience of meaning, of a point to existence. I wouldn't if I was sitting there beside them, clapping my hands, sitting in the cross-legged position, listening to the music and chanting the music. I would probably feel fairly ridiculous doing something like that. But I can't look at the guy or woman sitting next to me and say, this person is not getting any meaning out of this. How do I know? <laughs> um, because I don't get any meaning out of the toys. I mustn't forget the fact that I once did get meaning in a context that involved the toys. So meaning was there, it's just I now have to find some other way to bring it about within myself, or I have to bring about meaning, period. And you can't really share meaning or value. As I say, I'll listen to, uh, uh, for example, what's a, a nice syrupy, trite bit of music. Enya's Sail Away, you know, Sail Away, Sail Away, Sail Away. That is about as manufactured as music gets, and it's dumb, and it's hokey and yet I get a real rush from listening to that piece of music. Other people will say, I cannot believe you listen to that crap. What can I do? <laughs> if, it, if I feel something, if, I get, if that is a, an effective tool for me to find meaning or value uh, in existence, what can I say? It shouldn't? Should I destroy the meaning that this song gets? Or el elicits in me? Or assists me to get out of life? No, I'm not going to do that. Um, you can't say that this person is not getting meaning out of... I don't know, you ever see these people that sit in the park playing chess all day? You think, what an absurd way to live. Maybe they're getting meaning out of it. Maybe they get as much meaning out of doing this as somebody else might get out of parasailing or, uh, uh, you know, any other interesting diversion in life. I don't have any way of gauging someone else's sense of meaning because people co consistently mistake 
the um, the means by which you make a point to existence with the actual point itself. Uh, to me, the ultimate example of that is if you go to Japan, although I'm sure you can, you don't have to go all the way to Japan to see this, uh, there's a thing called a pachinko parlor, <laughs> uh, where you go in and you flip with your thumb, I think, this little ball that flies up and comes down, and, and uh, uh, it's like a pinball machine that's vertical, uh, and uh, it's just a real weird thing, but apparently the Japanese can play this for hours, pachinko. And I look at that and I go, what kind of a machine would actually get enjoyment out of this? I'm not Japanese. I haven't been, I haven't had my mind molded in, in the context of the Japanese culture. So I don't have any way of, of gauging the satisfaction the person gets out of playing pachinko. For them, maybe the person sitting there repeatedly doing the same thing is exactly where he or she wants to be in life. That this, there's some sort of um, transcendent bliss that comes from playing pachinko. Whereas I look at it and I go, oh, how can you just sit there and do this? What a waste of time. I am not that person. I'm not equipped to judge whether or not uh, they're getting any satisfaction out of that. I can say that you, maybe you shouldn't get satisfaction out of something so stupid and mundane, but I can't say that you're not getting meaning, that you're not, there is no point to that. For me, there is no point, but I don't understand maybe how this thing actually can have a point. That's all I'm saying. For the person who's doing it, quite obviously, it does have a point. Careful with meaning and um, value of existence. It's not the sort of thing upon which I think the normal rules of evidence and burden of proof can be applied. How do I know what experience is elicited in someone else by an overt act? I have no way of knowing Somebody sitting in a bingo parlor here in my city, there's lots of them. Uh, some people go there three or four times a week and spend five hours a night doing this. I can't imagine a stupider way to run one's life. But I'm not equipped to gauge the value they get out of that. I'm not equipped to question that person with, what's the point of doing this? Only they know what the point is. Um, and I can't walk up to that person and say, look, what you're doing is pointless, it's stupid, it's a waste of time, and you now have to show me uh, how that's not a waste of time. Well, this person might not be interested in showing me anything. <laughs> they might just say, would you mind leaving me alone while I'm trying to play bingo here? Leave me alone while I'm trying to play bingo. Is that so much to ask? <laughs> uh It might be, considering the amount of deliberate suffering over moral issues or questions of value that seem to be part of the human condition. What you're doing is stupid and meaningless, and I'm going to correct you. <laughs> How many times have you heard that one before?